Oftentimes, when using an oscilloscope, you need to make quick on-screen measurements or annotations. That's what the cursors and callouts will do for you. When you turn on cursors, you can move those cursors either by clicking and dragging with your finger or a mouse, or as indicated by the A and the B annotations here and the illuminated knobs, you can use the knobs to move the cursor positions back and forth. Pushing on the knob will toggle between a coarse adjustment and a fine adjustment. If the cursor readouts are in your way of the waveform, you can click and drag and move those readouts to where you want on the screen. Double clicking on any of the readouts brings up the cursor menu. And on the menu here, you'll have the option of moving those readout locations to the badge area over here if you want them completely off of the waveform display. Now, the cursors themselves actually have four different types. We default to a waveform cursor, which is where we actually put a waveform point on the screen and you move the cursor back and forth and it will give you both the horizontal and vertical values. So in this case, the time and voltage values of the waveform at that location in time. You also have the option of doing just simple vertical bars where you're only measuring time. You can measure horizontal bars where you're only measuring vertical parameter, typically voltage or current, or you can actually toggle between both vertical and horizontal and have them both on screen. To adjust those, you would essentially adjust a pair at a time. So by touch, adjusting the vertical bars here, and if I touch on the horizontal bars, now I can actually adjust the horizontal bars. But most of the time, we're typically using waveform cursors. The cursor mode indicated down here uh, independent means that each cursor is adjusted independently. When I set it to linked, the A knob will adjust both cursors back and forth, and then the B will adjust the delta between them. You can precisely place a cursor position using the numeric entry pads right here. By default, the cursor is on the selected waveform. So for example, if I have a second waveform on the screen, by Selecting the two waveforms, I can move the cursors from wave, one waveform to the other. But within the menu, I can choose to say I want the cursors to be only on, say, channel 2, regardless of which waveform is selected. I can also select all, and now the cursors will give me readouts for both the uh, vertical and horizontal positions of both waveforms simultaneously. I could also choose to split between two different sources. So for example, I could put cursor A on channel one and cursor B on channel two, and now I can measure the difference from one waveform to another very easily. If you need to precisely place a cursor, you can use the zoom functions to zoom in on a portion of the waveform and then position the cursor there. So for example, if I turn the zoom on with the zoom control down here, and let's zoom in on a particular uh, area of the waveform. Let's say this uh, little narrow pulse here. And for some reason, I want to have the cursor located right here. If I grab my A knob and start moving the cursor, you'll see it'll move through the unzoomed area at the top. Once it gets into the zoomed area, it slows down. And I can again hit the fine control to slow it down even more and precisely pace, place that cursor where I want. When I unzoom, that cursor will stay in that position. Now, of course, the waveform cursors give you not only the time and voltage, reach cursor location, but also perform some calculations for you. They'll tell you the delta time uh, between the cursors and then invert that to give you the frequency. And then you'll also get just the, the delta V measurement, the delta voltage measurement between those two cursor locations on the waveform, as well as the delta V over delta T, which is kind of like the slew rate. If you put those two cursors on an edge, for example, you can get the slew rate between those two points. Callouts give you the ability to add screen text, annotations, and even some quick measurements. We touch the call out button, we get this new call out that we can edit. If I double tap that to edit, I can double tap here to uh, add text myself, either using the on screen keyboard like this or using an external attached keyboard. I can also choose to change its format. I want to change the font size or the color being used or bolded or things like that. We can do that as well. And simply clicking and dragging, I can position that wherever I want on the screen. But there are actually four different types of callouts. This first that we just did is called a note. 
that's another another call out and start exploring some of these others. Let's say, for example, I want to highlight this particular narrow pulse. Let's double tap and edit this one. We'll call this narrow and change that from a note to an arrow. And now I can see I've got the narrow text I can move around and I can position this arrow to point out that particular narrow pulse. Another call out type, let's add one more here, is called a rectangle. Let's go in here and let's call this runt and change this to rectangle. And that gives me a rectangle here that I can go and drag and move around. Let's position that over this thing. If I just touch on the rectangle once, I get these little handles that allow me to drag the size of that rectangle around. I can cl simply click and drag its movement's position. And now my favorite call out is something called a bookmark. Let's actually say, let's call this runt voltage and change the type to a bookmark. And now you can see I've got this runt voltage uh, call out and a little essentially cursor or probe that I can position anywhere I want on the waveform. And now I get an immediate measurement of that particular voltage. You can add as many of these as you want. So it's sort of like an unlimited number of cursors. We can go through and make the same edits in terms of format and things like that. I could also precisely position that uh, bookmark at a particular location in time to get a voltage measurement at the particular spot. By adjusting the format, maybe the size of this particular callout, you can make the size of it much larger and easier to see. So you could be on the other side of your bench, for example, making some adjustments to a circuit and being able to see a particular measurement on the scope screen, even at a distance. So your cursors and callouts can be really handy to provide annotations as well as quick on-screen measurements on your waveforms to make it easy to extract the information you need on your oscilloscope.